So hello and welcome to season five of the Mundane to Magical Online Summit series. My name is Louise Matson, and as always, I'm truly blessed to be your host. Now, as we come to the end of this season um, of the summit, I feel truly blessed to welcome back a returning speaker from season two, the wonderful Kristen Lynn Jacobson. Kristen is an incarnated Tibetan Tara born a divine conduit. And as a highly sensitive star seed, she experienced life multidimensionally from the beginning. And when she was around 38 years old, realized that somehow she was living someone else's life. Like many of us, she realized that she'd done all the shoulds and need tos and have tos and almost none of the coulds and want tos. So although outwardly she was highly successful, she was riddled with health problems and inwardly felt completely disconnected from herself as if she were living a lie. So one day she packed everything up, her children, her dogs and a couple of suitcases and left everything behind. She was scared but wanted to create a life where she could be free of all pain and truly know herself as an emanation of source. She chose to transcend her life into one that she could own, a life where inner landscape mirrored her outer one, filled with great love and joy. And she now helps others to do exactly the same with her business Graceful Spaces through transcendent, Transcendence Coaching with Divine Mercy Evolution Code, Bioenergetics, Natural Healthcare, Resonance Alchemy, Energy Medicine, Divine Healing Master Key to Ascension, Lotus Light Body Surgery, Holy Fire and Karuna Reiki. Kristen is an earth guardian and she owns a conscious investment company, CLJ Family Investments, and co-founded Hope for Hearts, a non-profit that funds schools in conflict areas. Now, the topic for today's conversation is very dear to my heart, and it's all about reclaiming your joy, your sovereignty, and strengthening energy boundaries through Lotus Light Body. Light body activation and healing is extremely powerful work. And so I'm really excited with what Kristen has to share with us all today. So it's my absolute pleasure and honor to welcome you back to the show, Kristen. Thank you, Louise. I'm so excited to be here and we always have the best conversations. So looking forward to this. Excellent. Excellent. So as, as you are a returning speaker and as I've just, you know, gone through um, a bit of your background so that, you know, anybody new to you and your work can have a bit of a flavor of, of your life and your journey. Shall we just jump straight into the topic? Yes, that'd be great. <laughs> so just to start with, can you share a bit more about what the light body is? Um, just for those who may not have come across the term or maybe new to the term or may just have one idea or concept of what that term means to them. And, uh, and then if you want to segue straight into how we can actually activate our light body, um, if in fact it is not activated already. Yes, definitely. So um, the light body is a fifth dimensional energetic bridge between our higher self in the higher realms and the human physical and energetic bodies. The energetic bodies, of course, are the emotional, mental and spiritual bodies and the personality consciousness. The light body is composed of sound and light and color and sacred geometries. And each person's light body is completely unique to them. It's made up of a very specific set of geometry, sounds and light based on what their goals and mission were to incarnate. And um, it holds the template, the light body for us to return to our true nature as beings of light. So the way to picture it is um, that we look something like the white glowing ETs in the movie Cocoon. If you've ever <laughs> seen that movie Cocoon. And yeah. people can Google, take and just Google images from Cocoon, probably if they haven't seen the movie. Um, although it is a good movie, it's a fun movie. Um, but that's kind of what we look like in when we're just observing our light bodies. Okay. And, um, you know, I remember years ago, um, I was on somebody's healing table receiving a healing and I saw myself in my mind's eye with this zipper down the front of me and I unzipped the zipper and I jumped out of my skin suit, <laughs> I call it, I jumped out of my skin suit and I was running around. <laughs> 
found <laughs> as this glowing white shape <laughs> with a head and arms and legs and everything. And I was like, what in the world? <laughs> I'd, never, I'd never seen that before in myself or particularly in anybody else, even though I'd already been working with people for quite a while. And so I did this for years, like different places. When I would go to bed at night, I would jump out of my skin suit and run around. And when I was getting healings, I would. And it was so funny. And I just kept thinking, what in the world? And I asked a couple people along the way or mentioned it. Nobody, they were like, oh, that's interesting. But nobody really had much to say about it until um, I met the woman that um, teaches one of the only, I think, two light body teachers on the planet right now. And so when I went, when I talked with her and did a session with her and then decided to um, do the light body Lotus surgery training, she, it was, became clear to me that I'd been working with my light body for some time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the reason why um, the light body is usually dormant when we incarnate is because we have chosen to incarnate into this third dimension, right? Mm -hmm. And we are quite aware at this point in time now that um, we're all increasing our frequency, even people who generally are not consciously doing that. They're not here. They never thought that they came here to awaken, let's say. Um, but everything that's happened on the planet, uh, particularly since 2012, has um, increased the frequency of everybody. And a lot of people have woken up just even to the point where they're kind of looking around thinking, is this all there is? Or, you know, there's, there's something's not quite jiving here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and of course they're picking up on the matrix, right? That we live in the 3D world. And then there's those of us that are consciously moving into the fifth dimensional reality and so our light bodies are getting stronger and stronger because that is how we move through the mm -hmm. dimensions. So the light body could, it, it could also be um, called the Merkaba. So yeah, so it, it's the ascension vehicle, people, right? Yeah, I think a lot of people probably have heard of the term Merkaba and probably will think that the Merkaba, that's what the light body shape is. Um, that, you know, upward pointing triangle, downward pointing triangle, they'd probably envision that. Right. So and a lot of people, like work, of yes, yes, definitely. It is part of it. And a lot of people work with um, that uh, geometry, that particular symbol for the Merkaba. But our light body, which is our personal Merkaba, is already installed when we come in. And it's made up of symbols like that. Um, that's not the only one, of course. There's many more in light and sound, as I said before, right? That's the most well-known one. But this is also um, the the Merkaba is is and the light body is what Christ, uh, the last Christ that we had, ascended into um, the higher dimensions in his Merkaba. That's how he did it. That's the pathway that he did it. And of course, there's like three thousand different ways of ascending. <laughs> So this is just one of them, but this is a very powerful one. And it is the, the latest model on our planet, let's say, you know, from Christ doing that a couple thousand years ago. And um, so it's the one that we're becoming more and more familiar with. So when we incarnate, it's been dormant prior to now. It's been dormant when we incarnate for most people on the planet, um, Christ. Uh, light body was quite connected when he came in you know he was he was a being that came in at a very high high frequency and had his light body and his Merkaba already um, was a lot intact and, and activated he of course did more work to activate it and mm -hmm. to finish his ascension process but um, most of us come in with it dormant so that we can work on activating it basically because we came into a, di a dimension where there was tons of separation, as we know, the free will experiment, right? The mother, father, God wanted to experience and have information about separation and, and specifically separation from itself, right? Like what would it be like if we turned toward mother, father, God, which every other species did, or we turned to away from mother, father, God, which were the only species 
that has been created in this universe that had that ability. Mm-hmm. So that was the information that was being captured and, and played out and reported back to the Godhead to get more information about itself and the universe. When we come in, we have all kinds of things implanted in our, or, or positioned in our light body to keep us dormant and asleep. Mm-hmm. So in other words, before we incarnate, we choose which life we're going to incarnate to. And then we go over to the, um, the crystal shop. And <laughs> um, when you think of it, uh, like when you're going to the crystal shop here on, in, on earth, it is very similar. They are actually um, fifth dimensional etheric crystals. So they have some matter to them, but we choose, okay, I want this one and this one and this one implanted into my system so that I can learn this lesson associated with this etheric crystal and this lesson and this lesson, right? Mm. So there's 20 sets of just the standard etheric crystals in our head and our upper body. Mm. And most of them in our head, it's crazy. When you see the pictures of them, it's like, wow, how how am I even functioning? So that's one thing that keeps our light body dormant. Now, as we bring in more and more light, as we begin to wake up, as we begin to start adopting some of those fifth dimensional um, higher frequencies, those crystals start um, pinging and and disconnecting. They kind of... um, do all kinds of things to get in the way of our telepathy, our clairvoyance, telekinesis, clairaudience, all of those gifts that we have naturally as Mm -hmm. part of our light body, which is part of our divine human blueprint. The crystals start short circuiting those frequencies as we're trying to bring them in. Well, this becomes very uncomfortable, particularly if you're on a dedicated spiritual mission to bring these things in. And even if you're not, even if you're just the average person, what I see is more and more empaths incarnating. Mm -hmm. It used to be that their empaths were not that common. Um, You know, it was only one form of gift and um, it wasn't very common. And now I see the, um, particularly the younger people that have incarnated in um, the late 90s. 2000s and particularly now after 2012 I see more and more empaths coming in and empaths because they feel everything they can feel these crystals in their head in their head and their body and it's like oh that hurts and it it might cause um some spacey thinking or um it can cause some tingling and some pain Mm. can actually cause pain in our physical body because they're doing their job of trying to keep us asleep while we're actually trying to wake up. <laughs> okay. So one of the things that light body Lotus surgery does is it removes these crystals. This is a modality that removes these blocks. And of course the crystals are only one thing. There's all kinds of other things that we brought in also archon programming that needs to be removed. We have something called a body consciousness that we need to reconnect with. Um, because they are another group of energies that are trying to fight the light, trying to keep the light at bay. (laughs) So here we are trying to grow our light and they're trying to, they're doing their job and trying to fight the light. So we can, um, work with them and realign them. We can break their original vow that they took when we incarnated and realign them to be working with us in bringing the light in successfully. So that it's a lot more comfortable and it can happen much more quickly and efficiently. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's it, it like you say, it's that experience of experiencing separation, experiencing disconnect. And so we kind of have all this stuff um, built into, say, the operating system. That's how I'm right. showing it um, as we come in. So we're not at our original divine blueprint. The blueprint that we come in has got all of these different distortions in. Right. But I really feel, I mean, now particularly and, and over the last 10, 20 years, we've we've kind of automatic. It's kind of as if we've got this automatic bit in our program that is driving us to wake up, is driving us to kind of activate the light body. And that's why all of a sudden all of this discomfort, all of this kind of crazy thoughts, you know, 
you know, not really knowing what's going on and all that kind of stuff kind of kicks in because we seem to have this kind of go, we've hit a go time within, you know, mankind's history. And then all of these distortions kind of like really come to the fore and start playing out within our field. Um, is, I mean, I know you you work with the the, the Lotus Lightbody work and, and I've actually experienced that as well. And I can hold my hand up and say, yeah, loads of crystals. <laughs> I think I bought the whole shop. <laughs> right. But is it possible to to actually activate our light body subconsciously, you know, through through the kind of the organic natural kind of ascension process? Or is it that we have to kind of go through these extractions and, and things um, assisted and guided by others? Right. Well, yes, I mean, definitely our light body does activate um, sort of organically um, that, you know, it's part of our own mission, what, what we've come here to do. Um, some of us came here to activate our light body right away and we're working on it, you know, um, when the uh, indigo scouts came first, you know, those are the people in there that were born in the 1950s that scouted it out to see, yeah. you know, um, how high a frequency we could bring to the planet and um, what the free will experiment would look like and produce. So, yes, there are people that have been working on it for a long time there and we have our, our models. Um, Christ is not the only one, of course, that activated their light body and ascended. That's just, um, you know, one of the most recent ones that we're very aware of. Um, and then it also is a matter of the frequency in general on the planet. Yeah. Okay. Because as we have, you know, those of us worker bees, right, that have boots on the ground, that have worked with the light, and, and um, these types of energies for years, you know, for me, 20 years specifically, plus, um, we have been able to bring as a group, whether we knew each other or not, we've been able to bring the planet to a certain level herself, the light on the planet at a certain level, so that it allows a more of a mass awakening. And that's what's happening right now. Yeah. Right. So yeah, there's certainly other ways to um, to do the um, light body work and activate your light body. One of the things that's particular to Lotus light body itself, this modality, um, is that it's what we would call a karmic bypass technology. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that one of the one of the normal ways that that we would have been working with our light body in the past is you know going through learning all the karmic lessons around each crystal individually let's say right and there's 20 plus depending on if you're an overachiever you can bring in some more more than 20 louise <laughs> yeah <laughs> right <laughs> just definitely your story so um, we, you would have to normally go through the karmic lessons associated with each crystal individually and then work with that um, you know, in a conscious way, it, it not, not even just going along, being a good person and living a good life. That's an amazing way to be of service to the planet and raise your vibration. But if you are somebody who wants to, you know, really dive into your life's mission, whatever that may be, really find joy and peace. And um, a lot of the, the people that have come in to activate their light body early on and work with this um, type of energy we took on a lot of very difficult challenges so we've been through a lot of suffering a lot of trauma let's say so in order for us normally to work the light body we'd have to like i said karmically learn every lesson and go through the entire rigmarole <laughs> of each crystal individually well with lotus light body Light bought this, this particular modality was a dispensation. It was a karmic dispensation that was given to the earth. It was brought to the earth at humanity's request. So those of us that are boots on the ground basically said to the karmic board, 
please help us. This is, is taking too long and it's so traumatic. A lot of people, you know, are just really struggling to get through this and it's taking a long, long time. So can we have a karmic dispensation where you can give us a technology to where in one, you know, hour session or two hours, say two, two, two hour, one hour sessions, whatever, two hours total, where we can have these crystals just physically removed mm. in one go so that <laughs> we don't have to. Now, yes, when you're removing the crystals, there are, you know, there, there's information that comes through mm. and there are still um, awarenesses and even lessons that are learned through the removal of the crystals in that session. So it's not like, oh, okay, just let me remove these and you don't get any information about it or, you know, you don't know why you, why you put them, you know, in your fields in the first place. No, information does come through, but it takes a much shorter time period to work through the information and the learning in that one session versus all 20 crystals independently that makes sense yeah. no absolutely and I kind of see it, it's a bit like the chicken and the egg for me because it's like we, we are in this perfect timing for for this new modality and for other new modalities to come through to kind of give us these shortcuts because mm -hmm. people have been here for decades working you know doing the work progressing through yes. you know and 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 I've been doing the work karmically progressing through the different lessons. So it's kind of having experienced both sides of it. It's wonderful that they've now come in, but I kind of feel like it's, you know, as time is kind of fractal and spiral, it is the perfect timing. And it's because of all the light work that's been done by people before us. And that's enabled higher vibrational people to come in at that level and their light body to be a little bit more activated as they come in that we're in this position now where it's kind of like wow yeah I get to kind of clear this I'm not saying it's easy because that was one of the other questions that I wanted to ask about the kind of the symptoms that people might feel mm -hmm. um, or the sensations uh, from a, a life experiential perspective but also a kind of a physical emotional mental perspective from right. having the light body activated because I, I know some people will be doing this by themselves kind of mm -hmm. you know spontaneously and possibly thinking oh my goodness what's happening to me and then some people will be experiencing a session and then what would they expect to feel having had the crystals removed having had these blocks removed well generally speaking they feel really good <laughs> because they don't have so much junk and the crystals are just one thing, as I said before, we, there's all kinds of Archon programs involved that need to be removed. Um, there's um, different vows, uh, dark force vows that we have online. And interestingly enough, um, when you remove the crystals, you have to um, break your dark force vows before you remove the crystals, because if you don't, the crystals will come right back. Mm. There's a mechanism within the crystals themselves <laughs> that was that that we agreed to that we were could not release these crystals totally unless we actually knew what we were doing right yeah. right um there's also as i said the body consciousness um and that is an amazing energy because that works specifically with your physical body and um so once you realign with that consciousness and you're working as a team then a lot of physical problems go away and then you have that bridge with them that communication bridge with them even if it's just you know in your mind where you're thinking of, of you know okay body consciousness what's happening here what do I need to do to help myself with this or you know what's the best course of action between you know these two things like you know what should I eat today you know wh what's going to make me feel um what kind of workout's going to make me feel good you know so those very physical grounding issues as well mm -hmm. and um that's one of the reasons why people feel un so ungrounded at, at times is because the body consciousness is trying to keep them from being grounded that's their job mm -hmm. until we realign so it's just, it's very interesting. And, um, you know, this was 
channeled um, by um, Archangel Ariel in the 1980s to a woman, Tashira Tashi Ren. And she was on the planet. She channeled this body of work and she had one group of training to teach people. And then she left. <laughs> She left. She, this was just her. This was her job to do this. Yeah, just bring so, it in. just to just yeah. to bring it in and and sort of disseminate it to a group, and then it was like yeah. a little effect to go out. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I I find that super amazing and fascinating, right? And not only did did she bring through um, the the modality itself and the various treatments, let's say, and so forth. But um, the group that she was with, Angelic Outreach, they also brought through lots of tools mm -hmm. for us to use, as you say, to assist with these um, influx times of higher light. Mm -hmm. Because once you remove these things from your fields and your physical body and all that, then you can't just leave holes there, right? We have to then, it's filled with more light of our own soul coming down into our body. So um, there's lots of tools to assist with that as well to your previous question. Um, and I'm a big believer in energy hygiene, daily energy hygiene, just like you brush your teeth. Yep. <laughs> I believe in daily energy hygiene. <laughs> and particularly if you're um, empathic, which we have tons of empaths now, we know that um, we are, are, can be disturbed um, by other people's energies. Yeah. And then if you're carrying around all these other people's energies, then of course that affects your light body, just like everything. Mm. And so uh, there's different, um, ways of clearing your energy right uh lots of there's there's some bigger techniques and then there's smaller techniques that i think are very very valuable and um part uh, one of the um modalities that the woman teacher the female teacher of light body um she brought through another modality called divine healing because they were perform the light body services and teaching the light body, but they didn't have a complement of the emotional mm -hmm. programming and the emotional components that came out of this yeah. to your um, last point. You know, people, when you're doing this kind of intricate work, a lot of things surface and that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah. That's what we want. That's why we're doing it. <laughs> and we then want a method, a technique, tools to assist us with those emotions that are coming up and with, um, you know, all of the uh, programming, the old programming mm -hmm. that's coming out of the operating system, as you say. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. I was just wondering, um, cause I'm, I'm conscious that I'm trying to keep an eye on the time cause I know you want to do an activation, um towards the end mm -hmm. um but i just wondered if you had some sort of fairly simple uh tools and techniques that people could use to uh you know manage their energy field clear their energy field because i know from my perspective you know that was all that i was channeling you know years ago was going to get back to basics you know get back to the basics of you as an energy body and sorting your energy body and you know managing it and not walking around like this open sponge just soaking up everything right. <laughs> in right. the environment and from the people around us so um so yeah I know the the real importance of that because I've had it drilled into me by source for about a few decades now but if you had some tools to share that would be great Yes, absolutely. And as we have um, what are called um, commonly now in the spiritual community as the third waivers, <laughs> we have the third wave of general people waking up. And as I said, those are the people that are, are 
you know, becoming conscious of something's not right here. Like, you know, what is happening? This doesn't make sense to me. I feel like there's more out there. I feel like, you know, I'm not getting the full truth of, you know, what is going on around me. And um, I'm starting to experience these, you know, weird aches and pains and fuzzy thinking. And, you know, that's, I just don't feel good. And I feel heavy, let's say. And that, a lot of that is the denseness of the collective's energy coming forward. As we go back up into unity, right? As we leave the third dimension, which was separation, we transcend again or, um, um, and to the fifth dimension, which is about unity. Well, what ha has to happen? Everything that's not unified in our fields needs to come up and leave. And um, so it does cause a lot of issues. So there's a couple techniques that I like just right off the top of my head. Um, if you go to my website, these are on my website as tools. Okay. They're under the tools section. So it's graceful spaces, um, plural dot Vegas. And if you go to the tools section, then you will find the um, angelic outreach um, clearing grids. There's one for your personal grids like your person personal fields and then there's one for spatial so it would be for your home office that sort of thing yeah. and if you do those um depending on where you are and what you've been doing um they're very valuable to do at least once a day if um in you know some people do them at night before they go to bed some people do them in the morning and it sets them up for the rest of the day if you've been to a big sporting event or on the subway or this one of these places where there's lots of people, you might want to do, um, you know, the personal one at least um, after that, especially if those types of things make you feel heavy. Um, there, That's very handy. And then there's also another um, tool called clearing other people's energy. Mm. And that's a, a, these are not long to do. You just, the information's there, you just say them out and you just give yourself a minute to let them percolate and clear. And that's a really good one. If you are, let's say um, during the day, well, normally I would say if you're in an office, but with COVID, we haven't been in offices as much, but we've been doing Zooms. <laughs> We're doing Zooms all day, which yeah. still, even though you're not in um, immediate personal proximity to people, of course, we pick up things from people on Zooms, Zoom calls, right? Or um, these uh, technology meetings that we have, whatever platform you're using. So um, if you're just kind of feeling stressed out and not great, one thing, a very quick thing to do, if you don't have, you know, five or 10 minutes to do the grids um, or the clearing other people's energy, then another great thing to do is just to kind of put your fingers tips down to the ground and you imagine bringing up pink light which is divine mother energy pink light up through the earth through your fingertips up through your arms around your head down your body and then um you crop you, you kind of crisscross and just let it go down out through your feet and that just clears 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 that pink light Mm -hmm. The pink white technique. <laughs> <Very fancy. laughs> but you could do that in a matter of, you know, one minute. Yeah, yeah. And so you could do that several times during the day. And I do do that, um, you know, often um, during the day, depending on what I have going on. And I, if you get in the habit of doing it at least um, once a day, the more you do it, the more that you could even just ask your body, okay, let's do the pink white. It just starts, you know, the more that you strengthen your system itself, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, the more that you do these energy hygiene practices, the more you are strengthening your own energetic fields. And so you are picking up less. And then what you pick up is released easier and quicker. Yeah, I mean, I've I've kind of been shown it. Uh, a lot of my work is about stepping into sovereignty, reclaiming sovereignty, which is why you know your your topic title really gelled with with the stuff that I do. 
And one of the things that um, Source has shared is that, you know, we are going into unity consciousness. We are going into 5D. That's where we're all kind of heading as a collective and a planet, but we're not there yet. And so this energy management, these boundaries, this work to do around, you know, claiming sovereignty of our energy field, our space, whether it's the environmental space or our energetic body, our light body, is so essential because of that kind of that muddying of the waters, muddying of the energies, as it were, mm -hmm. of, you know, what we're ingesting and having absolutely no idea what we're ingesting because we've no idea that we're completely open. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would definitely say if you are new to any of this work um, and new to the idea and concept of that you have a light body, um, then, yeah, start with the energy management stuff. Start with those those clearing and um, just, you know, clearing out that field because you will feel so much more like your real self, your true self, as opposed to this kind of cacophony of everybody else's and everything else's energy within your field right right exactly exactly um i'm just wondering um how long the activation will take because i know that you want to guide us through a light body cellular integration activation mm -hmm. um, but i wanted you to explain a little bit beforehand what light body cellular integration is <laughs> Just right. anybody who's like never heard of that concept before. Um, right. And but just before we begin the activation itself. Okay. So yes, um, as we've talked about, you know, we, as we're increasing our own consciousness and our own light, um, we often have these physical problems because we have these things in our system that we incarnated with for, that were beneficial for our original purpose and incarnation. Now that the purpose of um, the free will experiment, let's say, has shifted to back toward unity and back toward the fifth dimension, we do have these physical problems and aches and pains and so forth that uh, come up. And as I said, it's because our light body is, has been interrupted, basically. In, and particularly, it can be damaged, as an example. Um, if people have been in a car accident um, or had a terrible fall where they've had, you know, blows to their head or their upper body, those can break the crystals, actually. So you can have a broken crystal inside of you. And then that will cause even more problems beyond just having the crystal interrupting your system. Okay. So um, that's one way that a light body can get damaged. Mm -hmm. It can also just not be, it can also just be missing connections because the light body is driven by these axitonial lines all over our body. And if people know what those are, um, most people are somewhat familiar with the meridian system in Chinese medicine. So if you think of the meridian system and then you break that down even finer into all of these little fine lines that connect all over our body, that's our axitonial system. And that is sort of the skeleton of the light body. Mm -hmm. So you might have gaps in those axitonial lines where the light is not meeting, let's say, for various reasons. And so that can cause a lot of the physical issues um, that people have. Also, if somebody's really you know, going through a huge consciousness growth and they're, you know, doing yoga and doing meditations and doing all of these great things, then that is, of course, activating the light body, at least parts of it as well. So the cellular integration, what this is about is it's a technique to basically fill in those parts, fill in those gaps, integrate the light body in a cellular manner. Mm. And you'll see as we do it, it's a full body integration and it really does assist with a lot of the aches and pains and, and different issues that we might be experiencing with our light body. Okay. So it's not um, the same as having the light, the Lotus uh, light body sessions, mm -hmm. um, but this is a good step for people to take at home. 
to be able to deal with their aches and pains and their the minor light body issues. Yeah, excellent. I see that um because I'm quite visual the way in the way that I work um when I'm doing energy work and I see it as kind of liquid light coming through in all the different highways and byways of our light body of our energy field and it is just like making sure that all those synapses are like reconnected and things so yep. it is a, a great starting point even if you know you're not quite ready to have all of the roadblocks as I see them removed <laughs> um, with the with the, the, the actual uh, lotus light body surgery stuff so yeah I'm excited I'm excited for you to share this activation with everyone um so Good. when you're okay. ready and the beauty of the light body work is that um it is a series of sessions but you don't have to do all of them you can you can do the first one which is realigning with the body consciousness that makes a huge difference right there yeah. you can do um the first three um, sessions, you know, which is the body consciousness. And then the second one is removing archon programs, which are, are major driving programs in our operating system. Mm -hmm. They create actually the operating system. And, um, so you could remove those and that would be a huge thing, mm -hmm. you know? So that's, what's nice about, as you said, this light body work is comes in divine timing for people. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's a good um, discussion to have and see if you're ready for it. Most people, even just the people waking up now are ready for, you know, at least one or two sessions. They may or may not go on to the advanced sessions, but I tell you what, it makes you feel so good. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and what I'm seeing in a lot of the clients that are coming to me and, and what I'm seeing collectively is we're all on this kind of threshold. You know, we, we, we've all entered this massive portal, um, particularly from uh, the last solstice, the December solstice. Mm -hmm. And so many people just seem to be on this threshold where they're like, I am so, so ready to just, you know, they really feel that pull to, to step into more of who they are you know so I think from what you're saying as well it is everything in divine timing and it's not like you have to blast through the whole lot in yeah. the space of a couple of weeks you know I you wouldn't you, want to no absolutely <laughs> not <laughs> you need integration time <laughs> as you well know <laughs> exactly and, and I think as well it's again it, all of this work connecting with your light body activating your light body is coming back into that sovereignty of knowing for yourself as well, trusting right. your own guidance on when it is that you're ready for the next bit. Right. You know, and, and I think that's the beauty of this work because you are coming more and more into your sovereignty, more and more into I'm connected with my body consciousness. I'm connected and I know when is the right moment for me to do this, that or the other. So. Right. And people are just tired of carrying the fear and the anger and, you know, everything that's happening in our world. You know, I mean, we've always had that to to a big extent. But this last, you know, 2020 was just a whole new world of fear and anger and divide. And, you know, due to COVID and so many, you know, other things. And people are just really I, I hear just people on the street or in the grocery store, or wherever they're just saying, I am just so done with this. I, I don't want to carry this fear and this anger anymore. Like it's not me, you know, they feel it out there, but there is like, I don't, I don't want to be a part of that anymore. I need a huge, I just need a big shift to something else. I don't necessarily know what it is or how to do it, but I, I just need to shift into love. I, I, you know, joy, happiness, mm -hmm. just, being present in that you know beautiful state of being like okay I'm grateful right now for what I have and what's happening in my life yeah. and this is this is a, a great way to do it because of the karmic bypass technology it's it's a faster way than a lot of other modalities and and I'm not knocking any other modalities because everything has their place I have a lot of modalities as you know you said in my opening it's a mouthful <laughs> but as we said you know um this is going to be one of the faster, more efficient ways to do that. 
Hmm. So, all right, so let's do the integration. I'm gonna turn on a little music here. And if everybody um, can just make themselves comfortable, either sit um, with your spine straight and close your eyes or lie down comfortably. Breathe through your mouth and relax into your body. See yourself as light, smoke, or a color. Breathe in the light of your soul, this light, smoke, or color through the top of your head, filling the head completely, filling up your brain, your eyes, and your face, filling the crown chakra and brow chakra completely. All the way out to the tips of your hair. Now bring the light into your neck, filling the throat chakra completely, filling all the muscles and vertebrae in your neck. Now bring the light down your spine, filling all the vertebrae in your spine, filling up the back muscles and ribs. Now bring the light into your shoulders, filling up all the muscles and bones in your shoulders. Now bring the light into your arms, filling them completely, filling up all the bones and muscles in your upper arms. Filling up your elbows, filling up all the muscle and bone in your lower arms, filling up the wrists and into the hands, filling up the hand chakras and all of the little bones, tendons and joints. Now all the way out through your fingers until it squirts out of your fingertips. Now breathe the light into your chest. A nice deep breath, filling up all the organs, muscles, and bones in the rib cage. And filling the heart chakra completely. Now bring the light into your abdomen. Another nice deep breath, filling up all the organs, muscles, filling up the solar plexus chakra and the navel chakra completely. Now breathe the light all the way into your pelvis, 
filling up all the organs, muscles, genitals, bones, buttocks, filling the base chakra completely. Now breathe the light into your thighs, filling up the muscles, filling up the bones and the marrow. Bring the light into your knees, filling up all the bone, all the tendons and fluids. Breathe the light into your calves, filling up the muscle, the bones, and the bone marrow. Breathe the light into your ankles, filling all the bones, the muscles, the tendons, and the fluids. Breathe the light into your feet, filling all the bones, muscles, and tendons in the feet, filling the foot chakras completely. Breathe the light into your toes, all your toes extending about three inches past your toes and allowing the light to extend completely under your feet as a cushion. Breathe the light into your lungs, a nice deep breath. Feel it, feel your lungs and enter your bloodstream like oxygen, nourishing your body. Bring the light through your entire circulatory system, filling it completely. Now, take a deep breath and swallow the light. Feel it, fill your stomach and flow into your digestive system nourishing your body completely. Breathe the light into your brain. Feel the light making new synapses connecting in the brain. Feel it activating the brain glands and flowing out to affect all the endocrine system. Now bring the light down the spinal cord and from it through your entire nervous system, filling it completely. Bring the light into your lymphatic system, flowing it through completely. Bring the light through your entire skin, filling your skin completely with light. To lock the new energy into the body, now clench your hands and your feet and hold your breath.
Now do this two more times for a total of three right now. Now cross your hands on the upper control panel in our upper chest area. Breathe in while pressing on the chest and hold for a count of seven and then relax. Do this two more times for a total of three right now. Okay, now lay your hands on your hip bones. Breathe in and press with your hands, holding for a count of seven again. Now do this two more times for a total of three. Now cross your feet at your ankles and your hands, clasping them together. This locks in a new state of cellular integration with the crossing of the ankles and the hands as a new set point for your cells to embody. And we're gonna ask the keepers of the body consciousness to integrate this light further at whatever level is possible for us multidimensionally. Thank you for this gift of love and feel the gratitude in your heart. How was that, Louise? That was really nice. Yeah, it was really lovely. Especially at the end, because uh, I don't think I could help smiling, actually, because it was just my heart filled up. And then 
all of a sudden I felt like I had a little bit of a whitey where it just went up beyond my head and it calmed down again <laughs> it was like... beautiful beautiful yeah that was excellent thank you um and that is something that people can repeat um at, at any time any time you could do it daily you know it's like it, it takes like 10 minutes or uh, 12 minutes at the most but yeah, that's just something that everybody can do every day as part of their energy hygiene, strengthening their energy boundaries. Excellent. And I know that you are also providing a, a free gift to the audience as well. Um, the Unified Chakra and Soul Meditation. Um, yes. And that is on my website also. That's another great um, energy um, boundary technique. Um, it's also quick. It's, I think, like eight or nine minutes. And um, it's useful, particularly now, because our chakra systems are changing, right? There's been so much talk of that. Um, there, As we are unifying, um, we are not just the chakra here, the chakra here, the chakra here, the chakra here anymore. They are meant to work together as one system. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening for a lot of people is the chakras are not functioning as independently as they were when we incarnated because that was the usefulness then. And now they are also morphing into a more um, and evolving into a more unified state. And so the um, unified chakra and soul meditation, it's about bringing more soul down into your body. And with this unified chakra, um, situation and again it keeps your boundaries strong um, it's kind of like having a little cocoon around you of, of energy every day and um, we use golden light of our soul with that so it's a very beautiful thing and you can go to my website gracefulspaces.vegas and that one you get with the code magic five yes yeah, and all that information will be on the free gifts page. So, you know, if you can't kind of, you know, scramble to get a pen or jot anything down, don't worry. It's all on the free gifts page with the, the code and the instructions on how and where to, to put that in to access that. Right. And I know and that you also... the other thing was the 20% uh, 20 for, 20 I'm doing a, um, the bonus is I'm doing a 20% discount on any of my services any one service on my website. So there's lots to look at and lots of free tools on there and um, a lot of different types of recommended reading and fun movies to watch and, you know, to help people on their spiritual journey. So if people were interested in starting off with the Lotus Light Body Work, that would be easy to be located on your gracefulspaces.vegas forward slash shop. And you can use the 20% off, which is the special offer for this uh, community with the Magic 21 code. Yes, yes. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us again. It's lovely to connect with you again and for you to share all of the information um, and that lovely uh light body activation as well um which i'm sure everyone will really enjoy when they when they listen to this uh this replay this interview has been pre-recorded unfortunately we weren't able to do it live um as i'm sure it would have generated many many questions but if you do have questions then please feel free <clears throat> excuse me to to pop them in an email and i will pass them on to to Kristen um as well after after the session so thank you, Kristen. Is there anything that you want to share to kind of end this end this conversation, end this session um, before we kind of sign off? Well, I want to thank you again, of course, because um, these summits are um, such a great act of service. I mean, they, they take a lot of work and time and energy and you uh, really excel. <laughs> at doing this. And um, it's such a great service to everyone on the planet and the planet itself. Um, so as, as people 
listen to these interviews, not only do they independently gain information, but we're getting all of these activations and all of these healings are being offered, um, not just to your listeners, but also to everybody on the planet. And so I just really want to thank you for that because I know it takes a lot of time and um, it's just such an amazing service. I'm in awe and I'm grateful for you for, for doing this. And I just want to say, I think this is a really exciting time to be here on the planet. I think, and feel that um, there's so many opportunities ahead of us that were not there before. In years past, things did move much more slowly. Things are moving much more quickly right now. And we have so many beautiful, just amazing high frequencies coming to the planet and amazing modalities like this um, and many others, you know, to help people on their spiritual journey and um, do it with a little bit more grace and ease. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. And we, then some of us old timers <laughs> have done it. So it's just an exciting time to be on the planet. And um, thank you so much. I feel so grateful to witness everybody's growth and um, just beauty. Mm. I see it everywhere. So thank you so much, Louise. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. No, I mean, I know for a lot of people, it can feel extremely challenging and extremely intense going through these times, especially 2020 and beginning of this year. Um, for me personally, it's been probably 2021, it's been more intense than I found 2020, but it, it's just remembering and allowing yourself to kind of step back and gain that 10,000 foot view on the wider perspective of what's going on. You know, it may feel and seem like, you know, the rug's been pulled out from under you within the very kind of like, zoned in lens of your life but if you're able to kind of step back if you're able to do this work if you're able to do the energetic boundary stuff particularly you kind of get that bit of distance from the immediacy of what's going on and you get that wider perspective on actually the benefits and like you say the opportunities that we have in this moment to upgrade to up level to activate it's just amazing it yeah <laughs> I love it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Louise. Oh, thank you so much. And so to everybody, um, we are coming to the end of the summit. Um, by the time you get to see this uh, uh, pre-recorded interview, and tomorrow will be the live closing conversation with me. I have no idea what's wanting to come through yet, so I can't give you any heads up, um, but I'm sure it will be amazing. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. All right, then, everybody, take care. Much love to you, and I shall see you all again tomorrow. Okay, yes. Bye-bye.